Welcome back, people. We are going to do these earrings. People have been asking me on Instagram how to do these. So, let me show you guys how it is done. I do have eight beads going across here. These are made of size 13 beads. If you guys are wondering what material I'm using, it's 13s. This one is almost done. So, I did run into an issue, but I'll show you guys how to resolve that once I get there. New. So the hoops I'm using here are time and true. They were on clearance. That's why I got a bunch of them. <laughs> I don't know exactly the name of everything, but here is kind of the listing in the back. I don't want to screenshot that. I did find my Walmart, like I said. So they just clip open and they are just hoops. Simple, plain. Nothing too Fancy. This is what I'm using. Take this off, discard that card into the trash. And now I'm gonna get my actually wrap it with buckskin. It's a simple buckskin. This is gonna start. Ooh, these ones are different than the other ones. Oh well. It'll work the same. This one is kind of short. So, let's get some measurements. I know this piece is about an inch and uh, five eighths wide, as you can see. And this piece is about a quarter inch. So you double that and double that, then you add an eighth of an inch just to get that wrapped around. So bottom, the width and width, and then about eighth of an inch. Eight inch to a little more than that. What is that? Five to six inches more for the wrapping. So we'll get some books cut out and I'll show you guys how to cut that little piece. So get my fancy dancy cutting mat. Let's change the position of this real fast. Because so that we can see that mat. And we don't need much because we're only doing a small section. Make sure your lines are straight. You have hair everywhere. I have long hair, so. And when I use, when I use a cut, I use a cork back to cut the mat. This when I put the this down, it doesn't want to move anything around. So I kind of just. Line it up as best as I can. Straight secondary ruler. You can mark it if you want, which I probably didn't do. I never have any pins. Oh, yeah. A five eighths. Five eighths. Five eighths. And one more down here at five eighths. You guys have my little marks here. These are all dots. And all I gotta do is line that one up, line that one up, stretch the back of this leather while I hold us our buckskin. And make sure everything lines up. Close enough for me. Doesn't have to be exact because. I'm not really going to see this, you're only going to see part of it. I do have a rotary, this here's a rotary uh, cutter. It does make quick work of this. Just to add, apply enough pressure to it, push down, roll across. And that's it. So I have my piece here and cut to the same width as this. And then we'll start with Wrapping around the uh, hoop here. So for this, I'm I don't have any glovers on right now. I actually ran out. I lost my last one. So I'm going to double thread this. I do have a size twelve. Um, needle here. 
with 9mob thread. So you can see right there, 9mob on the three ounce spool as well. So I'm gonna get my thread, double thread it, go to the end, put a knot. So I make a loop and I just grab the end here and I just bring my, I don't know how to explain it. I guess I wrap around the tail end. It's really hard to explain things on YouTube when I don't have a definition for everything. <laughs> so wrap, wrap, and wrap. I do about three or four times and then grab the tail end and pull. And I pull it. Spread it apart and pull apart. Make sure that knot is nice and secure. And just trim the excess off. Like so. Then pull my needle so it's roughly in the center of what I'm doing. And from here I want to start by making sure the ends are kind of squared off. Because you don't want to end that taper like so because I want to give you that flat finish. It depends on this part here. It's all up to you. You can have it do the rough side out like I did here or you can have it so then the smooth side down. It's all up to you. Your preference. I'm not going to tell you you're wrong. You're right. Just everything's up to you. So here I'm going to start from the inside. I don't have a thimble or anything but I'm just going to use my bare hands, push through ever so slightly, just so I can hide the knot underneath the buckskin, like so. This part does get a little tricky. Unlike this one here, this one had a little tab here for me to stop the, 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 the buckskin against it. This one doesn't have a tab. So you can see there's no tab. So I'm going to have to kind of play with this until it works. So I did go from an outside in, then I'm gonna go around and come from the outside down, push my way through and up, make a loop. And I'm roughly about a quarter inch from the top. I'm not starting from the top top, just because I wanna make sure that this thing goes together well. Or close to well. I didn't leave it long because I'll trim it at the end here once I get there. And then from here, I just flip it over, grab it. And here I want to maneuver it roughly into the place I want it. So I'm going to go from the outside towards from the outside in. And go across like that. So want to make sure that your leather is your leather or your buckskin is in the center working it so with me i go from the outside from kind of do like a figure eight going from the outside pushing through towards the center and coming up So once I get to the edge here, I want to go through. I want to be like 16th and 8th from the edge. Come to the top, pull it through, and then I want to go through the bottom here and go through again. If you have pliers, you can use pliers for this, but this is what I'm using. And come across, pushing these together. And make sure the loop kind of closes off. You want to use your hands to be a little more aggressive at this point. And kind of just make sure the loop's closed. And just go through and work your way down at an angle. So then you can go back to this part here. And like I said, if you have a plier, you can push your pliers or your needle through and 
Save your fingers. Do you have a thimble? Use that too. Whatever you prefer, whatever method you prefer to use to get your needle through the buckskin or material you're using. So with me, I did have a little gap all the way through. You can see there's little ridges on mine all the way down. That actually helped me to get my, it doesn't close it seamlessly all the way close. I find that a little more difficult when I'm doing this. But if you get a little closer, that's, like I said, your preference. Once I get it through, then I do the same thing. Work my way from the outside in. And just work my way down. Until you get to the end. Get back forward. You don't have to pull it too tight because you are going to be putting beads on this and you're going to be pulling it. And when you get, once the beads get on it, you'll be tightening again as well. So you don't want to put too much stress on your leather. So I'm going to go ahead and do this a little more and I'll Come back to the video once I get a little further down to where I need to show you the next steps are trimming off the end. So I'll be back. Okay, so I got to we're doing most of this round. It's not pretty, but it works. The pretty goes on top of it, so you never really necessarily worry about that. So with me here, I'm gonna make a little cut here. Just for the white part of the earring is that metal part. Meets this little hinge thing. And from there, I'm just gonna close this up so it's out of the way and continue my sewing until I get to the end. So however, however you are comfortable with sewing will work here. Just back and forth, back and forth. It's a process, but it's a long, tedious process. But it is necessary to do this. This is not a quick project. It's like be it is be working. It's leather work. It's A lot of combination of stuff to get this effect. So get down to I do keep my stitch close. They are about quarter inch to no bigger than a quarter inch all the way down. So we'll see. I try to keep my stitches small and everything neat and orderly. With it here, you want to do the same thing you did at the end here. Is you want to pass through the bottom, then pass through straight across to the other side. So you got to pass through the side of the buckskin and come out through the other side. I do want to make a loop there. So that one passes over, and now it passes over. And when I come across, this actually flattens it out. So it's supposed to. It makes it seem like it's a regular loop and it flattens it out. And that's what I want. And then I'll just pass it through a little lower here so it is not seen. Like I said, use your needle or your, your needle nose pliers to pull through. I just wrap it around a few times. So then the tension will hold it. I'm not using the knots in this piece. And be careful not to poke yourself because having blood on your work is not really good. I prefer to have the blood that I have to stay inside me. So you can pull it about three times, four times. And the friction will hold it in place and keep it going. And there you have your fancy dancy ring.
I'm just flattening out, going back and forth. Nature's round. There's no high spots here and there. Looking through your beads over it, there's no high spots on it. But that's how I add my buckskin to one of these rings.